This is quite possibly the eclipse season of all eclipse seasons. And I want to talk about why that is. I will do it specifically around this new moon energy or this first eclipse that's happening on October 25th in Scorpio. This is a wild ride that we are all on. Um, there's a lot of undercurrents. There's a lot of building. There's a lot of shadow, unconscious territory. There's a lot of, this is interesting and I'm really excited to talk about this today. There's a lot of potential, potential residing in states of consciousness beyond the archetypes like Mars and Pluto. And we'll talk about that, but there's this potential residing in this eclipse season that is so much greater than that level of energy, right? So let's just call an archetype like Mars a level of energy. This particular eclipse is falling on a level of energy that is, let's say, 50 times more potent than an archetypal energy. I know it's wild to me. It's also something that many of us will um, not be aware of or not know how to tap into. It's also something that I'm not necessarily seeing being talked about a lot. One, because it's really esoteric. It's really kind of out there. You really have to um, move into almost an altered state of consciousness to even feel in to this space, this potential. And I'm gonna try to get us there today. No pressure, right? No pressure. I'm gonna try to get us there today. I really want um, to be able to give you something to anchor into. To me, there is this potential in this eclipse season, which has already started, uh, kind of, it's like a roller coaster, right? It peaks at a top peak on the 25th, comes back down, peaks at another peak on the 8th of November, and then eclipses will carry us, like six months, we'll be in that energy. So just know that like we're in this for a while. It's not just, oh, bang, on the 25th, that's it. This is starting a new cycle, and so the 25th is also a new moon, which is a new cycle. It's an interesting start to a new cycle because it's almost the start to a death rebirth cycle which seems strange for it being a new moon. It's like, oh, new moon, it's planting new seeds, it's fresh starts, it's new beginnings. But this particular one, it's planting seeds for a death. It just, fe just feel into that. It is so incredibly karmic, this particular eclipse cycle. Karmic as in deep things that have been in motion for a long time. It's like, deep or choices that were made long time ago, the karma of those things being played out and our capacity now for them to be revealed for us, to see them, for us to work with them. And here's the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Our capacity to make new choices, our capacity to change our trajectory, not just as a collective, or a group, or a government, or a country, but as individuals. And you know, when I talk astrology, maybe you don't know, maybe this is your first time hanging out. If it is, welcome, good to be here with you. But astrology, I, I like to lean into the personal. I like to lean into the individual astrology. To me, that's just my territory. And for me, it's always like the inner deep depths if I can bring something to our unfolding, um, <laughs> that will ripple out into the outer. So, all right, let me feel into something else. I have so much juice right now, and my apologies if you're like, Sabrina, you are intense right now. I can't, I'm such an embodied being, and how I also bring this through is to tap into the energetics of this eclipse of the different archetypes or super juicy power points that are beyond the archetypes, which we'll talk about in a minute, is to tap into that energy and almost like allow it to move through my body 
to be able to give you something to feel into around this astrology. And so this super juicy, like I'm plugged in and have a ton of energy is how this eclipse feels to me. It also feels, this is a really, really important point. And if there was one thing for you to take out of this conversation, it feels like, I read this in, um, in someone else's little write-up this morning, uh, Divine Harmony. It feels like this moment in time, this eclipse season is the eye of the needle like the eye of the storm, the choice point, this real crossroads point, but crossroads point times a billion, like literally eye of the needle. And what we do with our lives during this eclipse season will completely affect the trajectory of where we, we go, of, of where we, we, we are headed in our lives. So, I don't say that to like scare us or to put us in this freeze, you know, fight or flight or freeze or fawn kind of a place, right? It's really to empower us and to make conscious what may have been unconscious. So to make it very, very conscious that this is a powerhouse of a time. I would say that this is the most powerful time of this entire year, possibly this entire decade. It's that powerful. It's that powerful, but here's the tricky part about it. It's that powerful, but it's also that high vibrational that it may be very unconscious for many. Won't be able to necessarily go there or tap into it because of the height of consciousness that this is coming through in. It's so, it's, it's so, <laughs> it's such high consciousness, such high vibration that it's hard to bring words to. So here's what I would love to invite you to do. I would love to just go for it, right? I don't want to filter. I don't want to try to dull things down or quiet things down. Um, I have a tendency to sometimes do that so that it can be relatable or so that it can be digestible. But I think for me, what feels truest and what feels like it will serve the most is to not do that. <laughs> that said, I'm gonna invite you to go through this and get what you can out of this. Know that some of what might be opened up or spoken about is way beyond where the mind can go. It's, it's beyond where um, we can go in waking consciousness. And so it might be something to meditate on, right? It might be something to come back to when you can be in a different state of mind that doesn't totally depend on logic, ration, reason. Okay, um, let's do this thing. So let me feel where to start. Let's start mundane. <laughs> we'll start in like a realm that's conversational and then we'll build our way up. This eclipse, new moon eclipse happening on the 25th of October is conjunct Venus. That's very tangible. Venus, archetypal energy. Remember, they have a certain amount of voltage, a certain amount of juice, a certain amount of potential. Venus is considered goddess of love and beauty. Also the aspect of relationships. So if and, let me also say this, um, can be linked to our values, what we value, and can also be linked to money because a lot of us value money. So it's values and our society values money. And so that kind of gets mixed in. What do we have a love for? What do we desire? Many of us desire, not all of us, right? Many of us desire abundance, right? We, we desire love. We desire romance. We desire sexual expression. We desire, and so just feeling into that, this is a, this is a good doorway in for this eclipse, is what do we desire? What am I desiring? And you can do this through different levels of your body or of your being. Okay, what does my body desire? Okay, my body is desiring sexual expression. Okay, what is my heart desiring? Okay, my heart is desiring deep, intimate connection with another human being. My heart is desiring uh, to be purposeful. And then I might go into a deeper realm and I might go like Hara is a really great place to work. That's this wisdom center down here, Hara Dantian. Um, we can go down into this lower wisdom center I like to refer to it as. We can go there and we can go, okay, what is my lower wisdom center? It's also referred to as the seat of the soul. What is my 
What is the seat of my soul desiring? So a really great practice, really powerful to do during this eclipse window, specifically on this new moon, which is on the 25th of October, is to really go into what are the different parts of me desiring. How deep can I go? So this is Scorpio energy now. So this is all falling in Scorpio, two degrees of Scorpio. By the way, it's really an, a, a powerful practice to look at your own birth chart. Where is two degrees Scorpio? What house does it fall in? And are there any planets that are conjuncted, squaring it opposite it around that two degree mark? But if that gets a little too confusing, you can always do the astrology masterclass free. It's totally free where it's just a video and I'm kind of showing you how you can run a free birth chart, how you can look up where two degree Scorpio is falling in your house. So if you need some help, go below, click on that, watch the video, create your birth chart, check out where two degrees Scorpio is. If you already know how to run your chart and look, just look where two degrees Scorpio is and look at the house. The house will tell you what area of your life is being illuminated during this new moon. It'll tell you exactly where these, um, these Venusian desires, the area of life, and, and we don't have to hold super strongly to it, know that it's way beyond the house that it's falling in, in your, in your life, but it's just a signpost, a way to feel into something, a way to reflect on something. So that's just a little side note of something you could dive into as another practice. We'll go through a lot of different practices and ways that you can get the most out of this, this new moon. So feeling back into this desire piece and it's going deeper. Let me get to the deepest desires. Let me get to the deepest desires, the deepest desires. That's Scorpio. Sun, moon, Venus are all falling at that two degree Scorpio mark. So it's the beginning of Scorpio. This is part of that. Um, the beginning degrees of Scorpio is really about um, un unmasking. It's about the disintegration. It's about the death, right? The death for the rebirth. This is the energy of death for rebirth. And so when I share, yeah, it's a new moon, but it's a new cycle of death for rebirth. We're in the death phase. We're in the, we're in the things are dying things are <laughs> in a transformation phase things will need to fall away in order for the transformation to happen the old will need to die <laughs> for the new to be born right so all of that energy is infusing in new moon energy which is this is a new cycle it just happens to be a cycle of death rebirth scorpio cycle of death rebirth that adds to it pluto is a big player in this particular eclipse pluto death rebirth pluto the sign of the hidden the sign of the occult the sign of deeper desires the sign of the unconscious so this is intense territory in itself this is intense territory in itself it's unconscious territory oftentimes in the unconscious we hold so much potential so much juice um, the golden shadow. I love, I love feeling into that for this particular eclipse, golden shadow. So it's not just like shadow, like mm, what's in the basement of my being around like things I've stuffed down there, old hurts or old wounds or old pains, but it's what is the golden shadow? What are the things that reside in my being that have yet to be awoken to, that have yet to be reclaimed or remembered, that have yet, we all have so much of this that's residing in this golden shadow territory. And this whole cycle is what needs to die so the golden shadow can come out, what needs to be let go of so the golden shadow can come out, what needs to shift or change or transform in your life so that your potential that is hidden and residing within already can come to the surface and blossom. That's the new beginning that this is. That's the planting of the new seeds, but it's what needs to be raked away. What old thought form. So this is going to be deep. I know we want like, Sabrina, tell me if my relationship is going to be shitty. I don't know. It's way deeper than that. We want tangible surface level stuff. This is way beyond surface level. It will affect everything in the surface level. Probably won't see it yet. Probably won't see it for a little while. 
but it will completely influence everything in our lives, every aspect of our lives, every relationship, every like career, job, home, da 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 There's nothing that this doesn't affect. But we won't see that for a while. Right now we're working in these deeper realms where it's, um, where it's like thought forms, like old unconscious thought forms that are being killed off. It's nervous system wiring that's being killed off. That's the death phase. So it's very, very deep. It's like you need a depth psychologist to get into and have a conversation about what is going on. That's where we're at. That's the Scorpio new moon um, with the certain alignments that it's got. Now, here's the other aspect of what's really making this a very hard eclipse to grasp onto. A very potent, high potential eclipse, but a hard one to cognize, a hard one to wrap your mind around, is that it's falling on a point that is, if you've heard of points like the galactic center or the super galactic center, right? Or the great attractor. Those points are extremely powerful points in astrology. This point goes further. It's bigger, it's more intense, but here's the interesting thing. This is where it's gonna get a little bit weird. When I was kind of feeling into this and meditating on this particular point, it was, okay, here's the realm of archetypes, Venus, Mars, Saturn, Pluto, right? Here's the realm of archetypes. Then you go up, here's another realm of, of essences. Then you go up again, right? So now we're going into higher and higher states of consciousness. Maybe not higher, we could say deeper and deeper states of consciousness. It goes the same way. There isn't one that's better than the other. They're just different states of consciousness that access different things. Typically, the higher and deeper that you go, the harder it is to access, the more you have to train your psyche and your consciousness to be able to move into those realms, to be able to move into those realms. They take practice. This is why we practice meditation. This is why we have activations and we have all of these different transmissions and this is why we work is so that we can open these spaces in our consciousness to go to those to go to those places. This eclipse is falling on one of these points that is in the void which is a high state of consciousness, high, 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 high state of consciousness. The state of consciousness that is the infinite all of nothing and the infinite all of everything. So it holds both. It holds both the masculine form of that high level state of consciousness, the infinite all of nothing, and the feminine form of that high level state of consciousness, which is the infinite all of everything, right? They're two sides of the same coin. They're at the same vibrational level. They just hold different potentials. They hold different potentials. They come together, they unite, and it is a nuclear bomb that goes off. It is enormous, it is massive, it is glorious. This is called the Shapely 8 Attractor Point, and it's at two degrees Scorpio. We have an eclipse, an eclipse falling on the Shapely 8 Attractor Point. Eye of the needle, perfect storm, enormous amount of potential, but it's that we have, it's not that we have to. If we wanna work with this energy, we're gonna have to meditate our butts off, right? We're gonna have to do what it takes to get out of mundane waking consciousness. Now, this will of course influence us no matter what we're doing. It's going to influence the world. It's going to influence our lives. It's going to influence politics. It's going to influence the US election that's happening on the next eclipse. It's going to influence things that are happening in your countries, wars, potentials for wars. It's going to influence financial markets more. Like shit is getting real. It's going to influence all of these things without us being conscious of it. But here's the wild thing. What if? You can consciously work with that. That's what we're doing in this conversation. Just by talking about it, we're starting to bring our consciousness to the possibility of working with this. Even you right now thinking, if you're still here on this video, which I'm sure half of the people have dropped off because they're like, whoa, Sabrina, go on. I don't know. You're fucking off the planet. Totally off the planet. 
because that's where this potential is residing. But it's not to be off the planet to zone out or escapism. It's to be off the planet to bring this enormous amount of goodness and potential in to embody it, to anchor it, to bring it into the heart, to bring it into that lower wisdom center, to bring it out into my life, to manifest from that high, 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 high level of consciousness. This is so stunning. It's, let me come back to that. Um, I just want to weave over here to South Node for a second. This is also a South Node new moon eclipse. It's a South Node. So South Node, South Node is where we've come from. It's not where we're headed to. It's where we've come from. So again, with this theme of in this new death rebirth cycle, it's death. South Node brings about what is it that we need to let go of from the past in order to skyrocket into the future in order to skyrocket into our potentials, into our future visions, our soul longings, our true north. So feeling into true north, like you feel into true north for yourself, your true north, right? Your fullest, deepest, truest, most authentic path forward. That's what's on offer. And now it might be a little bit painful for a little bit. It might be a little bit karmic. It might be a little bit of letting go. It might be a little bit of ego crushing, a little bit of stripping off the false masks, a little bit of rewiring old nervous system patterns or old thought patterns or family crap that we've got to let go of, right? So there can be a lot of this stuff, triggers coming up to the surface, inner child wounds coming up to the surface, right? Past life. Eclipses are extremely... Um, their, their south node eclipses are past life territory. You don't have to believe in past lives, but it's the karmic backpack you came in with. So the beautiful thing is whatever's in that karmic backpack, <laughs> um, it's like the, the zipper's unzipped and all of it is right here. Like all of it's right here. Okay, in a past life, and I'll give you some random examples. In a past life, you were a crazy warrior. Right, And so you have this warrior imprint, but you have pain around the warrior imprint because you lost a lot of your friends in battle. So you have pain around the warrior imprint. You have this wisdom of knowing how to be a warrior, right? A warrior. In this life, you're becoming more and more conscious, more and more evolved. So you want to be a heart warrior, a sacred warrior, a warrior for a cause, right? Not just a, a messy wild warrior who just was warrioring for because he was told a warrior, right? It's, it's from a very different place. It's like a soul warrior. But you won't activate that because there's too much pain sitting there. You won't activate your inner warrior which would really serve your life. It would serve your family. It would serve the cause that you're behind, right? It's like sacred action, sacred warrior. This is a sacred calling, but you won't activate it because there's too much pain sitting on top. Well, the last time I was warrior, all my buddies died. All my gal pals died, right? I'll, I'll, I lost everybody the last time I did. And the last time I did, I had to just follow direct orders and it went against my my values. It went against my truth, my authenticity, and I won't do that again. So I'm not gonna activate sacred warrior. That's a space to feel into in this new moon. What are you not activating? Here's the thing. With the depth of this, with the, sh the light being kind of shown on the unconscious, we get to see or feel into what is it that we are not activating in ourselves. Golden shadow. Golden shadow. What are you not activating in yourself? I'm not activating mother archetype. I'm not activating the mother in me. I'm not activating the mother in me because I lost babies in a past life. So I'm too scared, there's too much pain there. But really, your soul essence and your soul blueprint in this life is to have children. But you're not activating it. Can you see that your golden potential, your golden shadow in this, in this life is to be mother but you're deathly afraid, your body has an imprint of not fertile, not fertile, not fertile, not further, will never let a fertile egg attach to a womb wall because there is too much pain there. And we're not conscious of it. So you don't know why you're not getting pregnant. You wanna get pregnant, but you don't know why you're not getting pregnant. Or you wanna fight for what you believe in, but you get sick, right? You get sick during the middle of the battle, but you don't know why, or you just get really tired and you don't know why. 
this is the territory we're working in right now. This is what's on offer. And it's stunning and it's big and it's beautiful and it's um, profound. How the heck can we work in this territory, right? How can we work in this territory? Deep, big, guided, facilitated programs or spaces into the hidden. In underworld journeys are really good. I know some of you have like dark goddess, Persephone, Hades, retreats from rewilding. Those are really great journeys right now. I know that some of you are joining mystery school. That is a beautiful container to be held in at this moment, right? In that mystery school container, there's also, and just if you're not in mystery school, don't worry, just keep listening for a second. There's also practices that take you beyond the archetypes, beyond the essences, into the state of the void, very powerful place to be. Very powerful place to be is into the state of the void. The infinite all of nothingness. And if we were gonna go opposite of the void, we would go to ground of being, right? So opposite of the void, void, infinite, all of nothing. We would go to ground of being, Ground of being infinite, all of everything. These two states, for me, if I was to say to my most beloved human beings on the planet, which you happen to be one of them because you're part of this, right? Where can you get the most juice right now during this eclipse season, during these next six months? It's in those states of being. It's in those states of being. It's, it's beyond the archetypes. Archetypes are great. They're great, but they're like a doorway in to get higher and to get deeper. This is what's opening up. And to me, this shapely eight attractor is opening these doors wider. Yeah, we've always been able to get into the void. Yeah, we've always been able to get into the ground of being. Maybe not always, but we have been for a while. There's many spiritual technologies that take us there. There are practices that take us there, groups that take us there, teachers that take us there. That's been there. That's not new. Maybe it's new because you're just hearing about it now. But it's like those doors are widening, right? Both the heights, so let's call the height, the void, we'll call that a height. The void, the infinite all of nothingness. It's, it's easier to access, that doorway is blown wide open. It's easier to access. It's more activated. And we as a human being have a capacity to go there and to work more in that realm, to open more to that realm, to receive and integrate the gifts of that realm, to bring them back down, to embody them, open, activate new potentials, new capacities in our being, and then express them out into our lives and out into the whole of the world. So that's if we're going to the heights, same thing going into the depths. We could call the heights masculine. We all know the void is the masculine path to spirituality, the infinite all of nothingness, consciousness itself. That's the masculine path. Yes, beautiful, profound, amazing insights there. Yes, doors wide open there. And then we go the opposite way. So it's not one without the other. They're both wide open. It's not one without the other. The, the great, this shapely eight attract, eight, eight. Infinity, infinity, the heights, the depths, meets in the middle. That's you and me. That's you and me. Okay, so let's feel into this. Let's feel into the opposite. Remember I said I was going to try to get us into this state? This is it. This is it. So if you're like freaking out or zoning out or wanting to switch, this is it. This is the space that help, that's helping us to get into these states, all right? So, so bring it all, right? Because this could be where your greatest potential lies. And I'm not doing this to yell at you. I'm doing this because I can feel the enormous amount of love that resides here, the enormous amount of consciousness, the enormous capacity for transformation in the highest, greatest way for your life, my life, the lives of everyone, this whole planet, the whole world beyond that, right? So it's coming from this place of just passionate and love. All right, so if we're gonna go opposite of the void, right? You go beyond the archetypes again, like you go into, we'll call it deeper, just for sake of finding words to talk about this, that's way beyond words, but deeper and deeper and deeper into states of consciousness that take you to the very ground of being. The very ground of being, the infinite all of everything. 
The ground of being opposite to the void, ground of being the infinite all of everything. You are everything all at the same time, all at once, right there, all of it. You are everything. It's not that you are nothing. That's, that's the masculine path, but the feminine path, you are everything. You are all of it. And you have this capacity to consciously stay there, to be there, to experience all of everything. The ground, the very ground of being, right? The ground of being. Now, so for those of you who went through the rewilding experience or who are in mystery school because you have access to that, whole thing, these practices for a lifetime, right? These spaces is where the juice is at. These spaces is where the most amount of potential for your life, our humanity, <laughs> beyond that, is held. Is held. In these places. In these places. You don't have to do mystery school to get to those places. You don't have to have done the rewilding experience, which was that free four day thing that I've been talking about for weeks, right? You don't have to have done that to access those places. There are other places to go to access those places. I don't know where, right? I don't know where. I know there are other people doing that. I know there are other spaces going there. Here's the thing about it though. Eight, go back to this shapely eight. It's eight. It's not just doing the masculine path to the void or just doing the feminine path to the ground of being the infinite, all of everything. It's doing both of them and allowing them the capacity to both become embodied, to unite, to marry, to dance, to weave, to make love, and then allow for this complete explosion within our beings, within our world, within our physicality. And that complete explosion is an explosion of high love, high consciousness, infinite fucking potential that we can't even possibly fathom. That is what's being opened up in this eclipse. I told you I was going to go for it. <laughs> told you I wasn't going to numb it down or tone it down or make it so that it's digestible. I didn't want to deny us of this. I didn't want to deny anyone of this. I know it's out there. And so feel for you what feels true. I mean, if there's just a, this isn't mind stuff. This is, this is the wisdom self in you knows. It's like the place that you came from and the place that you will go to when you do not have a body, right? That's the territory that's being opened up to and that we have a capacity to become conscious of and to work with in an empowering way. Imagine manifesting your life from the actual creative essence that created you as a human being. The actual creative essence that can call a soul in, give it human form, and birth it out into the world. That's what's here. That's the territory when you mix the high heights of the void and the deep depths of the infinite, all of everything or the ground of being, right? And you dance in that container and you open up to that potential. That's what's on, that's where we're at. Now, most of humanity is not going to know that or be able to work in these territories. Most of humanity will probably numb out, freak out. There will be a lot of fear. There will be a lot of fear. Something I was meditating on this morning to share here is to anchor into something that is like this, something that can hold the perfection of everything that's happening in a love filled, not escapism. This is not about escapism. Right? I'm talking deep shadow work. I'm talking owning our shit, puking our shit out. I'm talking about death for a rebirth. Right? This is not escapism. It's not numbing out. It's not spiritual bypassing. Right? It's not that. It's anchoring into something or, or whatever it is for you right? that can maybe open up these doors for you or that can at least, at the very fucking least, not invoke more fear that is already so wild and loud and huge in our collective. The fear of change, something that can help you embrace change, inner change, outer change. This world is on fire and we can't see it yet. That's how it feels to me. The world is on fire. It is crumbling around us. Systems are, we just can't see it yet. We can't see it. Mars and Neptune, they're doing a dance. Can't see it yet. We, we can't, we can't see it yet. We can't see it yet. 
Holy moly! Uh, if I haven't spoken about mystery school publicly, I've only spoken about it to those who went through the four day rewilding experience challenge. I haven't spoken about mystery school publicly. Mystery school, it's open. Uh, we held our first circle today. Uh, it's recorded. There's a replay sitting in the members area. There's an early bird special happening on mystery school. It's over 20% off. That ends on Sunday though, the 23rd. I think this video is coming out on a Saturday. Uh, if you watch this and you're like, I really am feeling mystery school, uh, uh, send us a note. I hate saying this publicly. <laughs> send us a note um, if early bird special is closed. Just shoot us an email. We'll leave our email in the description below um, and we'll, we'll get you in at early bird pricing. We'll hold it um, for a week, uh, for a week. So if, the early bird ends on the 23rd. We'll hold this uh, open for a week, but you have to email us because you won't see early bird special on the sales page come Sunday night. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me feel into anything else that I can share with you. Um, I'll share this. <laughs> This next eclipse happening on the 8th, uh, it's a Uranus. Uranus is conjunct the North Node. That's fated. So remember we talked South Node? We talked South Node is very karmic past life. North Node, Uranus. This is a North Node conjunct Uranus eclipse. Uranus, expect the unexpected. Radical awakenings, rapid movement forward. It's kundalini awakening, rapid movement forward into the new, very revolutionary. And that's falling on the North Node. So this next eclipse further supports this whole death rebirth cycle, this whole reclamation of the golden shadow, this whole reclamation of future visions, your potential in this life. And, and you know, my question is really like, how far do you want to go? <laughs> And I don't say that in like a dodgy way. I say that like, it's, it's right here. Like, go for it. We get to go for it. We, we, we really get to go for it. All of our desires to be met. Like all of the creative manifestations to happen. We, we, we get to go for it. We really get to go for it. And I think I would just love to, you know, leave us with there is unlimited potential here. It's untapped. It is untapped, but it's, it's here. It's here. And so find the spaces that support you. Join mystery school. I know it's an investment. I know it's intense, right? It's three months, but it's going to change the entire trajectory of your life. It will awaken these potentials and these possibilities that will far exceed what a three month commitment was financially, energetically, emotionally, whatever goes into that three month commitment far exceeds it. And so feel into what, where are you at a choice point with? What crossroads are you at? Are you thinking about joining mystery school? Right? Are you thinking about making a move here? Are you thinking about this? Feel into, is there potential that resides in that choice? And if there is potential that resides in that choice, get over your little self. Whatever that choice is, if you feel the potential that resides there, get over your little self and make the leap and go for it because right now we're in the eye of the needle. Right now it's either we go through the eye of the needle or we just disperse and let all of the energy fade away into dust and nothingness. That's kind of where we're at. I'm crazy excited, crazy excited for all of these beautiful decisions that we have sitting in front of us, all of these beautiful potentials that arise from these decisions. This is, this is a new moon. It is a new chapter. It is new beginnings, but it's new beginnings that facilitate the death for the rebirth, the Phoenix rising. It's the Phoenix rising. And we all have, <laughs> this is a funny way of saying it. We all have shit to shed so that we are lighter and so that we can fly further, faster, truer to ourselves. This isn't about becoming something we're not or becoming potentials that are not us. It is us. It is your true self, your true full whole self being embodied, being expressed out into the world in all the aspects of your life. I'm pretty crazy fired up.
<laughs> I would love to do mystery school with you if it's something that's singing to you. Again, you'll find all the details below. Early bird special ends the 23rd. We'll sneak you in for a week after if you really feel like um, it's for you. All right. Love you so much.